Listen up or run for cover. Dropping knowledge from the people who have it to the people who need it. The, the, the real Robin Bradley Bombs. is dropping. What it is, Bradley, back again with another episode of Dropping Bombs. Today, folks, I got a real treat, and I'm sure you were expecting that, because I always bring the goodies. John Marone, what's happening? Everything, brother. Now, old John, let me ask you a question. If you guys aren't following John, he's at Real John Marone, not the, but just Real John Marone, M-A-R-R-O-N-E. Now, that sounds Italian, yeah? Just a little bit. Real John Marone, basically, people be like, dude, if you never heard of it, would say, why is he here? What's he do? That's what everybody does. Like, right when I announce the guest, if someone hasn't heard of him, they're waiting to know, what do you do? Mm. So, what do you do right now? Help people push past their bullshit and uncover what's holding them back and then give them the tools, not just motivation, inspiration, but truly actionable tools that they can apply to be better today than they were yesterday. Hmm. Getting rid of all the fluff. Getting rid of the fluff. Yeah. Now, what makes you a master of getting rid of fluff? Because I didn't do it myself, right? A lot of people want to give knowledge without actually walking through that life themselves. Uh, coming from, you know, past of addiction and, and homeless and, and you name it. Um, I had to figure out who the hell I was and, and figure out what the fuck was it that was holding me back. You said homeless? Yeah. Homeless by choice? Oh, no. No, I, absolutely not. How, uh, how old were you? I was... So I was couch hopping probably around 16, 17, still going to high school. Uh, but when yeah, I got out of high school, ain't homeless. no, nope. Then when I got out of high school, um, I was That's homeless. That's truancy. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. And then I started living in my car. Uh, I lost my car. We've all done that. Yeah. So uh, keep going. You know, from, from there, being able to push past all Where that Where were bullshit. you homeless? I want to know. Bricktown, New Jersey. Because like I was homeless, but I wasn't yeah. really homeless. Yeah. Like in other words, I slept on the beach one time for about two weeks. By choice? Yeah. Well, I mean, I didn't have anywhere to go. Yeah. I didn't have any money for a hotel. I didn't know anybody in the town. Mm -hmm. So I had to crash on the beach. Yeah. But it was the fucking beach, number one. Number two, I could have also said, fuck this. I'm going back home to my parents' house or something. Like, in other words, I could have found shelter other yeah. than the beach. I wanted to stay. I didn't want to leave. I had no money. That was my choice, right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to sleep on the beach. I got no place to go. Now, is that how you were homeless or were you homeless some other way? Uh, basically some other way. So my parents live in a motel. Okay. Uh, so one bed motel. So yeah, I could have went and slept on the floor for sure. Uh, you know, but at that point, my parents passed. I wanted to eliminate that being my future. And that's what I always associated with. Uh, because you know, being addicts themselves and making bad decisions, now that they've made strides. Were you, were you an addict? A big time, yeah. So you did the drugs and the whole bit. How old are you? Yeah, I'm 33. 33. Yeah. Um, when was all this happening? Uh, I started selling drugs in eighth grade. How much was an eight ball? Uh, so I didn't start selling cocaine until probably about, I would say 16. Okay, what, uh, were, you 150. what were you selling at eight? Uh, 150. No, I mean, what were you selling? Oh, oh, I was selling everything, man. So first I, I had speed. I was selling eight, in eighth eight grade. Eight years old? Eight, no, eighth grade. Oh, eighth grade. Not eight, yeah, I was going to say, eight. damn, Shit, that was, you should be a pro by that'd now. Be, that'd be real yeah, good. You never got good at it? No, nah, I, mean, I got, <laughs> I got <laughs> too good at it, but I also did my usually product. Usually drug dealers get rich. Yeah, so not, you can't get rich when you're, doing your pro when you're taking all your product to yourself. Hey, for all the kids, by the way, that might be listening, I realized the other day when a guest came in here and told me, I said, how'd you hear about me? He said, dude, my 10-year-old and my 14-year-old daughter love you. And I said, what? And that made me stop cussing so much. Yeah. And if anyone's listening, they're, they're like, dude, I, 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 now that you think about it, you do cuss less. But that's because it's like, dude, there's kids listening to us. You know mm -hmm. that? Yeah. So anyway, what was I going with that? God, well, well, see, this well, is what I was warning you well, about. Yeah. See, I went this direction, <laughs> and I was going down a good direction. So see, so my addiction, right? I'm not glorifying oh, yeah, oh, yeah. it. You, it yeah. you were eighth grade dealing drugs. What yes. were you dealing, though? Just speed. At just, that point, just speed. Yeah, just some speed okay. I found in my house. Just methamphetamine. <laughs> now the pills, cross tops, pills. Or, or or snort pills. crystal meth. It was pills. Uh, See again, dude. I was more hardcore than you. I was crystal meth. Yeah, dude, I didn't even know what a pill up. was. Yeah, like dude, it was straight up. Chop this up with a razor blade and snort it up your nose hole. Yeah. See, we did that with coke once we got into it. How uh, old were you there? I started probably about fourteen, fifteen is when I really started getting and into what that. What town was this? Bricktown, New Jersey. 
Okay, so, so I, so, and so I remember you're an unsupervised kid yeah. uh, by a couple of freaking parents that were on drugs themselves. Yeah. And they pro- lo- love me, but made bad decisions. Yeah. Well, dude, again, everybody makes bad decisions. Trust me. They're not alone. But, but again, good parents, but not doing the right shit. Like yeah. not responsible. They're yeah. not, I call them beaver cleavers. You didn't grow up beaver cleaver. Neither did I. Yeah, definitely not. Um, I also wasn't in a fucking hotel room with my addict parents either. So I was better off than that. Yeah. But everyone's got their problems you you're running around solving them even though you didn't have the right guidance you were running around solving them from a very young age dealing drugs is a way to solve problems did you know that do you agree with that so i used to okay because right now i want everyone listening to go hold what does he just say it's a way to solve problems why but they're temporary Mm -hmm. never trade small problems for big ones in other words you know you fucking have to sleep on a beach bitch you know, pull up some sand and you'll wake up in the morning and go try again. But guess what? You get caught fucking dealing drugs when you're not supposed to, dude, you're the dumbest some bitch on earth. Yeah. Like, dude, listen, I know a dude dealt drugs. Everyone envied him, had all the kick ass shit. Bam. Fucking prison. 27 years. And all he was doing was, was dealing Coke. And like you said, I said, what were you dealing? You said, ah, just speed. <laughs> like there's some people going, Oh my God, that's heavy duty. Now speed, weed, Coke, mushrooms, acid, like that was just the norm. Right? Yeah. Yep. But you get caught selling any of those, except other, other than weed. And still, you're getting in trouble, but weed's kind of going legal. But any of those other ones will put you in prison. Yeah. Did you go to prison? Uh, I went to jail, but not for drugs. So you didn't go to prison? No. See? Yeah. Now, again, isn't that a blessing? 100%. It, it was actually one of the you know, best things that happened to me. Is not going to prison? It's, it's going to jail. Oh. You know, so, so her people, her people, I'm a big believer in that. And I didn't realize oh, that until yeah. years later, but I would either, I was doing drugs or I was fighting every single week. So I had, I had a trouble. Did you say fighting? Fighting. Yeah. So every single week I was fighting. That was my identity. You know, I played football in high school. Then the drugs kind of took me away from that. So I was always trying to find this acceptance and I found the acceptance in doing what I did best, which was fighting. And so because of that, people finally liked me, quote unquote, but really they were actually judging me um, and probably had a lot of whispers. But I thought that was my way to fit in. And so it just became such a habit to fight. Um, unfortunately, the, the, the one fight that I got into, um, you know, it was four against one. I was the one and I ended up in jail, then house arrest and moving to a motel after that. And so being in jail was a huge eye opener for me, but not in a moment. I still didn't get it. Like through, through living in my car, living in a motel, through the, the uh, sitting in jail, house arrest. I still didn't get it. Now, I was young, you know, I was 22, 23, um, but I still wanted income, income, income. That's going to solve all my problems. Like you talked about with drugs, right? Like I could sell all these drugs. I can create income. I could have, you know, better things than anybody in my class because of this drug dealing. And I could party and, and do it at a very low cost because of I had the drugs. And so going through, I always thought income was like the number one driver and that's going to get me to where I want to go in life. And I had a rude awakening. It was October 29th. 2012 that shifted it all for me what what did you say october 29th yeah 2012 Why? that's when i lived in jersey right so jersey shore i lived on a barrier islands between all uh, bodies of water and hurricane sandy paid us a visit and i remember it because we just moved from our like 500 square foot apartment to our first house renting but still our first house and we're sitting there i pulled my family in from their motel and i said all right we're going to stay here because they live closer to the beach and I said, we're going to stay here we'll be fine We'll be fine. Well, we go outside. It's about 7.30 at night. And the wind is whipping, whipping back and forth. No rain yet. So we go back inside. We're playing Monopoly. And I remember because it's probably one of the first times that we played a, like a board game as a family in a really long time. And we're sitting in, in my bedroom. And all of a sudden, I hear trickle, like a water trickling. And I look. And I see in the living room, there it is, just a stream of water. I'm like, what? how the hell is this possible? Like, I was just outside an hour ago. And as I step through the, the water... I opened up the door and there it was. Roaring rapids, man. It was like four feet of water outside. And I had, you know, boats and pieces of docks coming in and I didn't know what to do. So my first thought was put up all the furniture I just got, right? Like selfish John Marone, here he comes. Like you just paid the money for this furniture versus like, let me save my family and get them somewhere safe. Uh, I was a one story too. And within minutes, the water uh, went and rushed to the foundation. I remember my dad, (laughs) my dad, I don't know what he was thinking, but he's taking this like mop bucket. And he's taking the water and shoving it outside. I'm like, there's four feet of water outside and it's continually rising. Like, what are we doing? So we got everybody upstairs. 
Um, and the water started rising rung by rung. And then it got really scary because the wind was unreal and it started boom, boom, hitting a tree against the roof. And so I see the water rising and I hear the thump of the tree. And in a moment, I had this, this overwhelming feeling of just like, what the hell have I done? And then when I looked back at my family and I realized they're up here and we're possibly going to die because of me, not because of Hurricane Sandy, but because I was stubborn and I thought I knew everything. So I stayed and I said a, a word that I probably never said in this type of context. And I was like, like, what kind of impact have I made? So weird for me. I mean, I was always money driven. And so when I said that, I was like, you know what? If I get out of here, I'm going to make an impact on my family and in this world. And so water receded, we got out, and that's not where it changed. Once again, that wasn't it. Hold on. So during this, you were still doing drugs? No, no. So I met a gentleman about four years before that, um, a Christian man named Pat Necarado. And he, he kind of showed me there's a different way to live. So I run in his sales. So and Pat his, cleaned you up. Pat cleaned me up. Yeah. Well, my Pat wife Pat. actually cleaned, cleaned me up. My wife did. Pat showed me a better way of living. Pat assisted. Big time. Huge Pat assist. and your wife. So was your wife with you as a druggie? No, my wife was straight edge, man, like until 22, and like she drinks now. But no, I mean, but was she with you as a druggie? No, no, she met me on MySpace while I was on house arrest. Um, and then she met me when I lived in a motel, and her parents basically found out I was a felon uh, for the fight I got into because it aggravated us all. And they're like, you gotta, like, he's done. Like, you can't be with him and stay here. And so she went ahead and she moved in with me into the motel. And now I'll bet you anything, everybody's happy. Oh, happy as pig and shit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All the parents always freaking out. Oh, yeah. Nothing. Oh, yeah. And I get it, right? I have a daughter who's going to yeah, be but what, free. Dude, listen, listen. Everyone almost in the United States, at least, probably the world, is a fucking felon, dude. It's just most of them haven't been caught. <laughs> So, so, so like everybody acts like, Ooh, a felon. He's a felon. Who gives a fuck, dude? Uh, it means he got caught doing something yep. and you didn't dickhead <laughs> quit judging people. Like what's the felony for? Oh, he was humping four year olds. Okay. Now Different you can story. start making some judgments, <laughs> Yeah, but at the end of the day, it's like you felon for what dude, you can be a felony. You can have a felony because of anything you, 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 you had a drink and drove and crashed. That's a felony. Okay. You did this, you did that. And there's more and more felonies coming. So when people tell me they're felons, I don't automatically think it's bad. Am yeah. I the only one that thinks like that? Not the only one, but it's just perspective as we talked about offline, right? So that's our perspective. Um, same with like addicts, right? Like just a perspective of like, Oh, I'm so sorry. You're an addict. Like, and there's a whole story behind that on, on why I well, changed at, the look well, of again, it. Again, addicts and alcoholics. I, I don't like to say things because lately my, my podcast is getting some influence i found out so i'm, I'm careful or i'm more careful about what i say so i'm yeah. careful about what i say but i said the other day dude like when someone says they're an alcoholic you probably do right um some, some alcoholic will say they're alcoholics even though they haven't drank in 10 years yeah. which means in my book i'm just it's just my book then they're not a fucking alcoholic yeah. because if you get a definition of an alcoholic it's someone that needs fucking alcohol yeah. well they don't need it obviously so they're no longer an alcohol. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'll be an alcohol, al alcoholic for life. I'm thinking, who bullshitted you to make yourself believe that? I'm, I'm in agreement. And agreeance. an addict? I'm not an addict. No. Shit. And, and if you are an addict, you're still a fucking addict. You're just choosing not to, which then cancels out the addict, yeah. doesn't it? Well, well, we're all addicts, man. Right? That's the thing. We're, we're all, all felons. Yeah. We're all addicts. Like, we're all dirt balls. But nobody wants to raise judging. their hand and say it. Yeah, I, I, there's some I of us that are it. way worse addicts. A hundred percent. And what do you, like, people always say, you know, sex addict. You heard of that? Yeah. Aren't we all? <laughs> I mean, what does that mean? Yeah. You like to fuck a lot. Well, so? <laughs> yeah. That's not, is that, that's a bad thing? Yeah. Like, no, to a, to a, to an unhealthy degree. What does that mean? Yeah. Like, if you sat there in your room all day and, and, and either wanted to hump or jack off, dude, that call, you're crazy. That's not an addict. <laughs> okay. So you, you need, you need fucking mental help. Yeah. Put someone in a hospital doing that. <laughs> right or wrong? <laughs> Absolutely. Well, what's different with the drugs? Like, again, if I see some, like my daughter or my son was in a room shooting up heroin, I realize at some point, dude, the drugs have them. Mm. They're not them anymore. Mm -hmm. So you can't sit there and rationalize with some loved one about heroin if they get like serious. Yeah. You know what you do? You snatch them up by the back of the fucking head and you drag them out of their little shithole. And you go put them up somewhere, and yes, it's going to cost you money, and yes, you probably get a busted lip, but you know, do it anyway. 
And then if they're willing or, or if there's even a chance, they'll clean up. But what if next thing you know, boom, they're back on heroin. When do you write someone off? It, you know, I, I think what it comes down to is you could love somebody from afar, right? And what I had to do is, you know, Going back to the story of, of when I got out of uh, the house and was sitting there, um, really, it, I was in a shelter, right? And my biggest, my biggest aha came this. When I sat in a shelter and I said, I made this promise to myself of, of I'm going to make an impact, but like, I have no idea what to do. And in that moment... How old were you? Uh, I was, t- I was 2012, right? So mid-20s, so 27, okay. something like that. Okay. So in that moment, I realized I don't know what I don't know was my biggest opportunity to grow. And so that was the biggest aha I ever had is putting down that ego and realizing you don't know it all. Matter of fact, the more you learn, like the more you understand, you don't know as much as you thought you did. And so I just continued down this path of massive growth and getting back to like the, the addiction thing, you know, and, and loving people from afar, I had to protect myself, you know, because I had a lot of people that were toxic in my life. Um, and, and that was only because that they lived their own lives by different values than I did. Right. And they didn't respect me because in the end, I probably didn't respect me yeah. and, and I didn't value me. And so they kept breaking every time I had great energy, positive momentum, they would break me and they'd come in with their toxic energy and their drama and I'd get physically ill. Um, and then I, I'd, I'd react. Right. And so I set these emotional guardrails in my life to allow people that what was once acceptable is no longer acceptable. And I told them what those things were. And they kept trying to break through, kept trying to break through. But as I kept progressing and I kept progressing, I kept growing, um, I, I made it a point to let them know that, you know, you're no longer going to come into my world and take me away from what I'm trying to, uh, you know, get away from. And, and the thing is, is I think that addicts, we all are one. But I think that if we look at addicts as a bad thing, then we're never going to use the addiction that we have as something that empowers us. So when I used to do, uh, when I stand up on stage and I speak on stages, people are like, man, you're an addict. Oh, I'm sorry for you. My cousin was an addict. My, my, my brother was an addict. And I just heard this somber feeling and I realized that's bullshit. Like you don't need to feel bad for me, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this addiction and I'm going to create this addiction to be the best version of me, to go ahead and be the best father, to be the best husband, be the best speaker, be the best coach. So I'm going to take this addiction that you're thinking is a bad thing. And I'm going to use it to serve me and empower me to blow past any competition, including who I was yesterday. That's a good one. Oh, I've been forgetting to drop the bombs. There you go. You're thinking over there. Because everybody comes there like, damn, dude, I was trying to get the most bombs. You didn't drop any. I'm like, that's when it's the most bombs. Yeah. When you, when you talk and you forget to drop them. Yeah. That connection. Well, yeah, because you know what? When you're really having a conversation, you're, you're not doing sound effects. But sometimes I want people to pay attention to what was just said. I'll drop a bomb. But, uh, dude, that's that. So how did you know you could do it? Like, like who, who, who smacked you yeah. so at, at one point you had to have just like you, when you said you woke up, the water's rising. And by the way, w- it wasn't like all magical. Like you described, was it? Because you said like the water was rising and I'm all there with you. And then you like, <laughs> and then I looked up and I said, if I get out of this, <laughs> that's, you know, uh, and then all of a sudden the water's receding. Yeah. Because I said that everything. No. And that's yeah. what I mean. Like it, it wasn't, wasn't magical. Was no, it? hell no. It was so scary it was, it as hell. It's the fear of like, I was, I was fearful. I was going to die. You can't go anywhere, dude. Most people no. underestimate the terror that a, that a, that a serious flood yeah. will cause because I always think, well, shit, just go out there and swim in it, dude. It's only waist deep. But, dude, there's shit poking out. There's electrical wires. There's oh, people bad. that die for a lot of reasons in a flood. But yeah. when it's coming in your house and it's scro- growing up and you go outside, it's just as deep and it's electric and there's shit going on. We had boats flipped what, over. Yeah, what do you do? Yeah. Like, you're just sitting there going, oh, my God. And especially if you got little kids and yeah. shit like that. Like, dude, I'd be, I'd be panicked. But first thing I would have done is got to the roof. Like, fuck the furniture. So my brother said the same exact thing. So we had, like, no service. And then he finally got a hold of me. He's like, get out the attic window. Go on the roof. 180 mile per hour winds. My ass would have flew away. 180? Yeah. It was crazy. Oh my God, dude. The, 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 the tree was legit almost coming through the roof. So there was no, if I got out on the roof, my ass would have flew away. Okay. Like, well, then sure. again, I, I'm just assuming like shit, it's just flooding. You're talking about, you're right oh, in the eye of the hurricane. This, yeah. Oh, 100%. This was, this was intense. How scary is that? That's, what, if, what if the house would have just peeled away? A lot of houses did in my and, area. And, and a car would have landed on your kids. No, oh, thank God I didn't have kids then. Well, what if the car would have landed on somebody? But yeah, but but you would have just been watching, like mm-hmm. like it was a movie. A lot of houses got ripped out of their foundation and flew and into you were the sitting ocean. right there, right there, dude. And would, did they warn everybody to leave or no? It was uh, voluntary. 
But John Marone, I, I would, stubborn dude, at times. Like, I would have stayed. I would have stayed. Yeah. It, I, like, I've almost stayed in a couple of storms only because it sounds fun. You know, you're thinking, I cool. love storms. Yeah. I still love storms. Yeah. You're like, but, you're crazy, but you bro. Don't realize, you, don't, you don't anticipate, like, oh, shit. <sighs> no. And people are like, you move back to a, a place where there's hurricanes. Because right? I moved to Destin, Florida. They're like, why would you do that when, like, Hurricane Sandy, like, almost took your life? I'm like, oh, well, first off, like, thank God Hurricane Sandy came because I used to call, like, I used to really uh, – Look at Hurricane Sandy in a negative way, but once again, like I think that life. This is a. This is one I want to talk about real quick. Oh because, shit! Hold on. This whole thing hadn't been recording this whole time. Uh, well, I'm, it's I'm all good. All right, it's all good. So look, I want to tell you something because this all like life happens for you. Life happens for you. I'm a believer in that, but people forget the main component, man. And life happens hey, for you. Yeah, but look, I'm gonna let you finish that thought because yeah. it sounds like it's gonna be a good one, but. I want to come back to what you just said. Okay. Life happens for you. Because I yes. do hear a lot of people say yeah. that. And I do have a thought or two. Okay. So let's see if we're, we're in alignment here. Because I think life happens for you, yes. But reality, it happens because of you. Like, I got in jail because of me. Right? Like, like Hurricane Sandy happened because of me. I stayed. Yes, the universe is show me something. So it's happening for me. But if I didn't take ownership and create something better afterwards, it never would have happened. See, now again, I agree. Well... Again, I'm almost with you. Okay. But like you said, you know, yes, the universe is showing you something. The universe ain't showing you shit, dude. You fucked up. There's some consequences. And ultimately, you can be positive and say, hey, man, this is happening for me. What can I learn out of this? Which is what you should do. Because yes. if you're in a fucked up situation, the only save is learning something from it. Because mm -hmm. there is no good from a shitty situation. So when someone says to me, Life happens for you, not to you. I always think, I get what you're saying. Like, like that's how I respond. In other words, I'm not going to try and argue with people saying it because I get what they're saying. And yeah, I understand it. It's a perspective, dude. 100%. Like, like, life happens for me. Really? Oh, so like if something were to happen bad, well, life happens for me. No, dude, that, that, that means make something out of this situation is all that means. Because, dude, life doesn't happen for you. Okay. That was because of you, man. No, life doesn't happen for you. Okay. You are a, I, I would believe, and, and by the way, I'm prefacing it with, I understand what they're saying. Cause I don't think they mean this. Everyone always goes, Brad, you're taking them out of context. <laughs> like when I post about Gary V and the patience thing, again, I love Gary V, but he's wrong about patience when it comes to fucking um, winning and, and goal setting and shit like that. It's like, dude, you're telling people to relax, take time, relax. No, 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 not when it comes to goals. Now, when when it's come to waiting for the girl to get out of the bedroom, okay, or, you know, come into the bedroom. Okay, have patience. You're waiting for, you know, paint to dry or shit to cook. Have patience. But, hey, I, I want something. No, don't sit back, relax, and understand things take time. Increase your activity and increase your actions. So I mm -hmm. fuck with Gary about that. And then I always get people hitting me up afterwards saying that's not what Gary means. They're obviously Gary fans more yeah. than my fans, but they're like, that's not what Gary means. You're taking it out of context. So I don't want to take this one out of context. Life happens for you. Yeah, I get it. I get it. Okay. You know, fine. But realistically, life don't happen for you, dude. If you actually believe this life is happening for you, okay, I think you're a fucking delusional, uh, naive being i think a lot of times though it also or brainwashed why well because dude life ain't happening for you bro okay life ain't happening for you it's because of you look i put a bullet in your head right now was that for you huh what was it was that that was for you what were you supposed to learn with that okay it ain't happening fucking for you man it's happening around you, and it's how you react which will determine what it is for you. So someone could come in here and fucking rob me, and I could fucking feel, you know, what do I want to learn from this and take something good out of it? But I got fucking robbed. The question is, why did I get robbed? Well, life happens for you. You know, the universe wanted you to learn something. What? To get a better alarm system? Like, why didn't they just fucking come in and tell me? Why they got to rob me for me to learn that? <laughs> Because someone w wanted to rob me, dude, for example. No one robbed me, thank thankfully. But I'm just saying. like, So that's my opinion on the life happens for you. And I've never really brought it up before because a couple of my good buddies say say that shit. Like, life happens for you, not to you. I'm like, mm, okay. But guess what, kids? Dude, trust me. 
life ain't happening for you. Okay, keep your fucking eyes open and your wits about you because it's happening around you. Mm. And you better fucking wake up and realize it because all people need to be is enlightened and aware. Life's totally different. And it's almost like a game and you're with the advantage. Like I feel I have the advantage over most people on this planet. Why? Well, because I realize and I'm aware and it's a game. You're just fucking playing in it, dude. Well, the game's happening for you. No, it isn't. No, it isn't. Okay, I'll fucking remove you out of the game in five seconds, bitch. Then what? That happened for you? No, it didn't. <laughs> Motherfucker, that happened to you. Okay? <laughs> Quit believing the bullshit, folks. Anyway, back to you. Back to you, John. <laughs> that's, that's a passionate subject I see here for you. Well, no, it's just because, dude, what I like to do is, is, is tell people the truth. Yeah. Because sometimes the truth hurts and you needed to be hurt. To wake the fuck up. Well, and and because, dude, you can spend five years circling back what sh- could have took you five days to understand. I just try to make people understand it. If life, I could argue with people. I can argue with people over religion. I can argue with a bunch of things. Why? Because I like to question things. So when it comes to life happens for you, I get it. Okay, cool. I agree, kind of. But no, not really. And if someone ever tried to, you know, let's say someone owns that phrase. I I don't know who owns that phrase. But if like some, the the author of the phrase is getting tagged in these, in these, in the, and and they're listening to this and they want to argue with me, dude, come on the podcast. Like, I'd love to talk to someone that thinks actually that everything that happens in life is for you. Okay. (laughs) It's for you. In that kind of, yeah, like, like, like for, like, for example. What was the reason when Chick-fil-A and Jack in the Box, or who, who was it? Uh, Chick-fil-A and uh, Popeyes. Yeah, Popeyes. When they were fucking having their little sandwich wars and nobody had any sandwiches. Great marketing. Right. Did that happen for me? <laughs> huh? Or was uh, that happening for someone else? It happened because of them. No, but like <laughs> what, what? life happens for me. That's part of life, dude. Yeah. Someone just farted while we talked. Do you know that? I'll bet you anything. Someone in this world just fucking farted and sharted, smacked their girlfriend. Someone's probably stabbing somebody right now in the world, in some fucking part of the world. Someone's getting stabbed. Is that happening for me? Yes or no? <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, don't think so. I Definitely know, but not. life yeah. happens for me. I like the context the around you. you. Ta- what the fuck are you talking about? Life happens for me. Life's happening around me, you fucking weirdo. But that's not what they mean. So let me clarify. That's not what they mean. That's not what you mean, whoever authored that. You're trying to get someone to understand something, which is what I do. I just do it more simply, I think, and raw and truthfully. In other words, life happens for you. I know. I lost my arm, and I got to figure out why that's that way it's for me no it ain't for you motherfucker you're at a disadvantage you're down one arm wake up like how do i take advantage of it that's what they're trying to teach you and i agree with them there see that see what i'm saying context behind it yeah so back to you john otherwise i'll rant for another hour (laughs) life doesn't happen for you kids it happens to you okay and 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 what happens to you is controlled by you generally not always generally it wait you wake up in the morning and you make good decisions you know what good decisions are yes you do you're born with them you're born with intuition and instinct there's very few bad people on this world we 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 make them that way and we become that way there's very few like overall comparatively there's probably less druggies than there are non-druggies so druggies there's not that many but dude you know why you become a druggie Bad decisions. It, it's a 100% yeah. decisions. Yep. Because if, because if you, until the drugs get you, don't get me wrong. Once you're a real fucking addict, like a heroin addict, and mm-hmm. you, you're, 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 you're going to die if you come off it. There's people that'll die if they stop doing drugs. 100%. So I'm not talking about the big range of this situation, by the way, folks. So, so again, I do not advocate drugs. I always give good advice, but I don't always follow it. Like, for example, if you said, should I do drugs? No, fuck no. Well, have you? Yeah. Did you regret it? No. Matter of fact, the acid I did, I think, makes me smarter than the average person. However, you know, would I do acid today? No. <laughs> Not unless, you know, the right people were around and it was like a dare. But no, at the end of the day, <laughs> at the end of the day, no, I don't want to do acid right now. But I'm glad I did when I was freaking younger. Yeah. Now, if there's a kid listening, 
I would hear if I was the kid, well, Brad basically saying, you know, he doesn't regret doing acid. I should do it. No, 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 you shouldn't. The right advice is don't. The right advice is don't drink, don't have sex, uh, don't have sex for a while. Like, you know, abstinence, that is the best advice. Okay. But we know it's not true. Why? Life, brother. Life's all around us. It's happening around us. How do you interact with life is the key. And once you master that, friends, now you can fucking dig yourself out like old John Marone did. You, I think what you're talking about, though, reverts to like life is nothing but the sum of choices we make. Right. And we all agree on that. hundred percent. But people are like, how the hell do you make better choices? It's simple. You ask better questions. Right. Like your quality of life is mm. proportionate to the quality of questions you ask yourself. Folks, he just gave you the key right there. Factual ask better questions and anybody that that's in sales which i'm sure a lot of listeners are your income is directly proportionate to the quality of questions you ask your clients it, it, and and so when you look at that also look at the the life side of it i ask myself several questions every day to help me make better decisions because like, i also think that a lot of us make decisions based on our feeling in the moment and not on our commitments well, of course and that's not the best way to make these Hells decisions no because my bed feels a lot better laying in bed at five o'clock in the morning and getting my ass up and going to the gym. It feels a lot better. So if I ask myself, oh, how do I feel today? I don't feel like getting up and I make that decision off of that, I'm never going to get to where I want to go. So I stay committed to my commitments by asking myself better questions. And so one of the questions I ask myself is, by taking this action, does it get me closer or further away from my goals? And I have to a, have clarity on what my goals and are. By the, and right? by the way, it's as simple as that. Because if you just yeah. ask that question, every, everything that came your way, and you removed emotion, yep. and just said the truth, you'd be making the right choices 99.9% of the time, and you'd, and you'd probably be the happiest, most successful freaking champion of the world. But here's the thing. Even if they ask that question, Brad, they're still not going to get the right answer. Because we're the biggest liars we know. So they're going to ask that question. They're like, oh, you know, it's going to get me closer, but, and here that, that word comes it's in. It's called rationalizing. Yeah, but I'm going to go ahead and I'll just do a two-day tomorrow, but I'll and call by, and you know 200. That, do you know why they do that? Why is that? That is, that is called rationalizing. Yeah. And you're battling with your subconscious. Yep. Yep. So, but here's the question that you ask afterwards, right? So you ask, okay, does this get me closer or further away? And before the but comes in, you say, and why the hell is that so important? Right, that vulnerability of understanding your why. Yeah, but you do the same thing though. Yeah. Why is that so important? No, oh, I love my kids. Well, no, you got to go deeper. I, I still love them. No, but you rationalize all the way to not going. Agreed, but that's if your why is not deep enough, right? And and I think there's momentary whys. We can get into that, but I think that people who who are inconsistent, right? I always say like without a strong why, your consistency will die. And so for you to ask yourself that question, it can't be for my kid, right? Like. If I want to wake up early, it's going to be closer or further away. It's for, yeah, it's going to get me closer. And why is that important for my kid? It's got to go so deep, let's man. Let's debate. Let's debate yes, this. Let's do it. Let's debate this. Because yeah. this is the thing, again, I keep getting with the, you know, you got to have a why. And then people want to judge someone's why. Like, why? I want to get rich. Yeah. Oh, it can't be money. Fuck you. It can be money. It, it can, can be whatever money. you want. It can be anything. Yeah. But, but, but if you go deeper, why do I want money? Oh, I want money so I could have everything I want. Well, why do you want everything that you want? And you just keep going deeper, you'll realize that it's not really money you want. Mm -hmm. And that's what people don't understand. So they want to argue that it's, no, it's, it can't be money. Yes, it can be. It's just probably not. Yes. And so as soon as someone tells me it can't be money, I, I, I almost like tune out. Why? Well, because, dude, it can be money. It can be anything. The question is, is what is it? And do you know what that is? Because most people can't find their fucking why, dude. And no one's showing them how to find their why. I always get people going, I understand. Yeah, you got to have a why. But what's my why? What am I passionate about? I don't even know what I want. That's the hard part, dude. I, I want to tell you a quick story about a why. I believe in uh, momentary whys. So I, I have a client. And we went through the process of finding her why. And she came back and she said, John, I feel like a complete jerk about my why. I did everything you told me to do and it keeps coming back to just one thing, but I just feel like a complete jerk. I said, well, what is it? She goes, my why is to buy a horse. I said, interesting, tell me more. She said, I don't know, when I, I just keep thinking like this, this horse you know, is really gonna uh, bring me the, the peace that I need. And I feel like a jerk because I have kids, I own multiple businesses, and I also have a husband. And I said, okay, so when you get on that horse, what happens? She's like, I just de-stress, I feel at peace. 
uh, feel a, a, a feeling of blissfulness. I said, okay. Then when you go home, what happens? Well, I'm not a, you know, such snippy, you know, person with my husband. I'm more present with my kids because I've let go of all the negative energy. I said, what about at work? She's like, I fly through work. Like I can't be stopped. I said, there it is. Your why, yes, is this horse, but all that is is a vehicle to drive you to the emotion to be the best father, to be the best wife, to be the best uh, business owner. So our whys, uh, it could be a horse. Right? It could be money. All that is is a vehicle to get to an emotion because that emotion is what's really going to drive you to take action or not. That's right. And so that's what you have to look at. It could be to make $5,000 this month. That's fine. What is that $5,000 going to do? It's going to help me pay off that credit card. Like I get it. I want a profound why. But maybe this month, it's just to make an extra $10,000 to pay off the credit card. And why is that important? Because I'm so stressed right now, and I'm snippy with my husband, snippy with my wife. And I'm you know, just absolutely in a state of, of you know, trying to always catch up, and it's not good. My health is ruining. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm not as happy. I'm not as confident. Then make it about the $10,000 because all that is is a vehicle to drive you to the emotion that you're trying to get to. Yep. And that's the same thing with goal setting. People have this, this myth of goal setting of like, my goal is to lose 30 pounds, Brad. Okay, why is that important to you? So every time I have people create their goals, right, I always ask them to what are your top six goals, right? One in each equity. Remember six equities. One goal in each equity and write down why it's important for you to hit that goal. And then the emotion tied to it. Go back to the 30 pounds. Well, I want to lose 30 pounds because I want to look good. I want to have more confidence. Okay, what would that allow you to do? I'll, it'll make me more money. Um, I won't be so insecure and think my wife's cheating on me because I'm so insecure in myself. I'll be able to play with my kids and not be out of breath after five minutes. Yeah, but you might be, you might be right about your wife. Yeah, could be right about your wife. Yeah. That's a whole other story. Yeah, and, whole other podcast. Yeah, whole other podcast. And what's that going to make you feel? Man, I, I, once again, I feel confident. I feel proud that I lost the weight. Um, I'd be able to feel proud that I'm able to create more income because I'm confident. I said, there it is. Because when I ask you, hey, brother, you got to make 100 dials today. And... You know, you go ahead and say, okay, I'm going to do it. Or if I say, hey, we got to get to the gym two times a day for the next seven weeks and I'll lose that pound, lose, lose 30 pounds, right? And he says, okay, I'm going to do it. Well, when it actually comes time to doing it, he's like, I got to lose 30 pounds, so I got to make sure I get to the gym. That's not going to be the thing that drives him. It's going to be to drive him is I need to be more confident and make more money to create the experiences I want to create with my family and to feel the feeling of pride, feeling of blissfulness, all these things. So what I'm telling everybody to do is listen, I'm all about actionable steps, right? And so remove the fluff is figure out, yes, your goals, figure out your why, but tie the emotion to it, get deep on it. And if anybody wants to judge you for that, like you got to go ahead and just let them know, like, like you believe what you want to believe, but don't put your limited beliefs and, and, and your uh, own you know, belief in your self-worth onto me. And you just got to live your life on your terms, not theirs. The only thing I would add to that is you have to have two. If you only have one why, it won't work. It's not as smart anyway. Why? Because you have to have two whys for it to be wise. See what I'm saying? Tell me more. Well, if it's just a why, then it's just a why. That's like a question. Mm -hmm. But when there's two whys, well, yeah. now you got, you're wise. It's wise. It's wise. Yeah. See, your first why is Double always entendre. a lie. See? Your first why is always a lie. Oh, interesting. Surface. I just made up. You had to have two whys just well, to make it the word W-I-S-E, which is wise. But you're right. I'm word playing, but now, shit, I might have stumbled onto a new. See, people say nothing's ever original. This is original, it's Original fuckers. shit. Drop that. You've never heard anybody say you need two whys for it to be smart. One why alone is not enough. I've just <laughs> discovered this. You've heard it on Dropping Bombs. Share it out there. One why is not enough. Whoever you hear saying, you got to have a why, tell them you're full of shit. You have to have two to make it smart. When they go, what do you mean? Dude, otherwise it's not wise. Your first why is always a lie. That's why you need a second one. Your first why is always a lie. And then you drill deeper. Yeah. Matter of fact, to find your why, you must ask why. Ooh. Right? Yeah. And keep asking why until your why becomes your what. And that's what people are looking for. Yeah. The what. Because, dude, I can go, I, I, I realize mentally I can accomplish anything I want. But then I think, what do I want? I don't know. Mm. Why? Oh, I want to be a good dad. I'm already a good fucking dad. What else do I want? I mean, where does it end? Mm. Oh, I don't know. I want to be a fucking uh, Lakers player. Dude, that ain't happening. <laughs> oh, well, you know, if you stay positive and you're thinking, you know, bullshit, dude. 
bullshit. It ain't ever happening. Yeah. Give it up. Stop bullshitting yourself. <laughs> Stop <laughs> dreaming, man. You're never playing for the Lakers, dude. Do you think that people set these huge like I'll bet you I'll bet you ten million dollars you can't play for the Lakers for real ever in your whole fucking life, no matter how positive you are. Yeah. I mean, and I don't give a fuck what coach. I don't know what I don't care what kind of coaching. You can go get Tony motherfucking Robbins himself to work with you every day. And you ain't playing for the fucking Lakers. Wanna bet? Because of the skill. No, because you can't ever do that. There is no mindset, perspective, and blah, 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 blah. Like, sometimes people need to be told, like, dude, I get dreams, and I get, dude, I was living fucking homeless, now I'm a multimillionaire. Anyone can do that. And, and trust me, anyone can. Would you agree? 100%. You happen to be one that did, so you're now looked up to and listened to, to how'd you do that. You're coaching people to do that. The people you're coaching are doing that. But I, I believe anyone can do that. Mm -hmm. That's possible shit. But what about, oh, anything is possible? Anything? Yeah, anything. Now, now listen to yourself. Not, not that you said it. I'm, 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 I'm talking to my bomb squad. They're driving around right now, by the way, listening to my soothing voice. And they're, and they're wondering half the time what the fuck I just meant. But I try to explain it. Okay. Now, in this particular case, what I'm trying to explain is like, Anything is not possible, but technically it is, right? I believe in anything's possible, but not anything. Like what? Um, you ain't playing for the Lakers. I'm never going to be quarterback for the New England Patriots, no matter what. Now, is it possible? Yeah, I could have leukemia and, and, and uh, Bill Belichick says, come on out, son, and throw the ball around. And No, that ain't the real quarterback. Dude, I'm not going to be that. I want people to hear what I'm saying for one reason. If you got some stupid ass, never going to happen, quote unquote, goals, and you don't have a plan to get to them, mm. you're just walking around sounding like one of those fucking, I, I'll, I'll make up a name on this podcast, but people spouting goals that aren't, that, that they're just dumb. What's your goal? I'm going to be a billionaire. Oh, uh, by when? I don't know. How? I don't know. I just know I'm going to be one. <laughs> oh, really? Okay. It's possible because it is. Yeah. How are you going to fucking get there, fool? Like, w by when? Because, dude, isn't, isn't a goal without a timeline just a fucking dream? Yeah. Yep. Someone said the other day to me, you know, his goal was to have $10 million invested in real estate. I said, that's it? W w by when? I don't know. I'm like, uh, what would you do last month? Like, how close did you get? You're not measuring it? Where's, what's the timeline? Mm-hmm. Like, what's the plan, bitch? Because it's not just going to happen because you have a goal, motherfucker. Yes or no? Yeah, hundred. And that, that okay, goes. So, I, so everybody listen, man. Get rid of your fucking goals and start getting some plans. Okay? Fuck the goals and get yes. the plans. Now, nobody will tell you that, but old Brad Lee. Why? Because the goals don't matter. Well, you got to write them down. No, dude. You write them down enough like they tell you to, and you start to fucking focus them on, focus on them more because you're writing them down. And so now you're focusing on them more. And when you focus on something, it grows and it fucking expands. So it's, yes. they're forcing you to focus on your goals. You, writing them down isn't what's fucking doing it. God damn. What you focus on expands, man. That's it. But Yeah, but at the end of the day, dude, it's the plans it's, that matter, dude. Well, I got your, a your goal. Intent doesn't I got matter. a goal to play for the Lakers dude you ain't never playing for the Lakers you know why because you're not good enough and you're never going to be good enough so fucking change your plan like change your plan you don't have to be a fucking Lakers player to be happy right like change it I just want people to find something that they can do there's too many people out there that literally call themselves entrepreneurs and they're not doing anything mm -hmm. they're not doing shit but they'll tell you they've got goals and it's like dude look I'm telling you, I'm, I'm promising you, write down your goals every single day. Is it possible to achieve them? Yes. But don't ever do anything. And I'm telling you, the likelihood is fucking minuscule. Mm -hmm. You got to do. Yeah. Well, I don't it, know what brought that up, but you must have said something that ran me off on another there's, tangent. There's a good chance, but I, I do want to touch on one thing. And, and it's something that I've been really talking about and feel really deep in my heart. And it's like, your intent is bullshit. Like, I don't care what your intent is. Look, I had, I had great intent to... See, guys, I fired him up. <laughs> I had great intent to do the right things, right? Then I made bad decisions. 
So a lot of you guys out there are sitting here and like, I have good intent to be the best father. My, my intentions are to be the best wife. My intentions are to be the best business owner. Your intentions don't make any difference unless you take the action. So your intent is nothing but wasting energy and thoughts that are in your mind that it's actually taking the energy away from you actually taking the action. So your intent, I don't want to hear about your intentions of being a better father, of starting this business. What you need to do is you need to stop worrying about your intent and just take the action. Start before you're ready. And so I look at these people and like, man, my intentions were to get to the gym. I don't care about everybody has good intentions. I, we all have great intentions, but the real good ones, the people that actually succeed and fulfilled, it's not about their intentions. It's about what they did with that intention, put a plan together, put action in and faced it every single day, no matter how they felt. So your intentions, I don't give a shit about them. What I care about is taking that intention, creating a plan, taking massive, aggressive, empowering action on a daily basis, no matter what's in front of you. Now you do that for your students, yeah? Yeah. 100%. So so now by the way, obviously we were just been talking about the the lesson learning uh era in your life, but eventually you woke up, stopped the drugs, and now you're out there speaking on stages, coaching people into freaking multimillionaire status. What where where was the transition? It was it the flood? It was it was when sitting in the shelter uh and realizing I didn't know what I didn't know. But then it was like, okay, it's time to truly start uh, investigating and digesting some of the best minds in the world on what they're doing and get myself out of the place of comfort. You know, I was, I was doing well. I was doing better. And I think that's what a lot of us say. It's like, well, I was doing better than I was. What does that mean? Who is that comparing to? Is it comparing to your brother, your sister who aren't doing well at all to the people in your – That's another good point. In, in, you know, people that are in your office that are – cool, they're making $60,000 a year. You're making seventy, so you're doing better. You feel good about yourself. Yeah, better than who? Yeah, better than who? And, and so what, what I want people to understand is that for me to get to where I was at, I had to take myself and separate myself from – not better from this person, that person. Like, am I truly better than yesterday? That's it. Because success isn't this like landing spot. It's just progression. Like when you lose 30 pounds, when you lose a 30 pounds, you feel great. But it's when you lose that five, another seven, another three. And you went through the hard weekend and a three-day weekend. And all of a sudden, you still lost one pound. That progression creates that fulfillment, mm -hmm. right? And, and so when I, I talk to these you know, uh, members of mine and anybody on stage, I just let them know that like I had to – really just put these blinders up and say, am I better today than I was yesterday? Stop comparing myself because you compare and despair disorder and just truly go ahead and challenge myself. And, and what I've realized lately is new levels bring new devils, right? I've also realized that we think that comfort zone, like once you get out of it, you're out of it. I'm done. I got out of my comfort zone. But there's so many different levels of comfort and we have to challenge ourselves on a daily basis of am I sitting in a comfort zone? What am I going to do to break out of it? Um, and just being super disciplined in my daily habits. Yeah, but now listen, every time I get comfortable, you're going to make me back to uncomfortable? Oh, yeah. So the very thing I'm seeking, yep, which is comfort, if I want to find it, mm -hmm. I'll never find it. You don't because, want comfort. Because I need to be uncomfortable to grow and develop to get comfortable. But at some point, you know, is there a comfortable and you get to remain there? I think there's fulfillment and then there's comfortability. No, no, no. When you're comfortable, mm -hmm. like you say, when you're in your bed in the morning, man, that's comfortable. Yeah. You don't want to go anywhere. You're comfortable right there. Mm -hmm. But you got to get up. Well, that's because you, got, you want more. Mm -hmm. Is there a point where, dude, you attained the comfort you were finally looking for? Because I keep hearing everyone, you can never be comfortable if you want to be. I don't agree, people. There is a level of comfort that you get to remain comfortable. You know what it's called? Well, that's up to you. See, that's another thing. You get to decide yeah. when that is. But if someone gave me, for example, uh, I'd say a billion in cash, I'm comfortable. And I, and I don't need to be uncomfortable anymore. Mm. Fuck you. I ain't doing it. Well, you're going to get fat. I don't give a fuck. Well, you're going to start spending that billion and start going backward. I don't care. I don't care. I'm comfortable, bro. I ain't doing another damn thing. There is a level to that, and that's where I want to get to. Yeah, so I see that. Because I... I'm there mentally. It's called who gives a fuck. Yeah. But I want to be there financially, which means f completely free. That way, literally, dude, if I wanted to smoke bong hits <laughs> off the Italian coast on a $100,000 a day yacht with a fucking staff for two years, that's what I'm going to do. Now, I didn't say I would do it. I said, 
if I wanted to. Here's the difference. Because, dude, that's comfortable. Here's the difference, though, Brad. Hey, and, and nothing's uncomfortable anymore after that, kids. <laughs> don't believe the whole, you got to keep stretching. No, you don't. Here, Only if you keep wanting. That's it. There, there's, there's the difference, though. There's the difference. Yeah, but I want to teach people how not to want. You Be- know why? Because happiness isn't getting what you want. It's wanting what you get. You drop a bomb on yourself? Oh, no. Oh, I think you oh, should. Oh, no. I've heard that. I, I, if I'd have made it up, I'd have said, damn, that's a good one. I've heard that before. It's, it's not, so true, it's though. Not, it's not getting what you want. It's wanting what you get. So, so that way, you are truly happy. Why? Well, shit, I might get a Lamborghini and a Ferrari, or I might get a fucking Honda Accord. Well, guess what? I'm fucking happy with whatever I get. Dude, that's the winner. Now, if you ask me, everyone would agree. Yeah, that's the winner. That's the real winner. I disagree. Hmm. The real winner is the happy motherfucker with the Lambo and the Ferrari. That's the real winner. Because a Lambo and a Ferrari is better than a Honda Accord. And everybody wants to say, no, 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 but you got to do, 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 do. No, no, no. Both is always the answer. If you can get rich and happy, that's the answer. If you had to pick, you can't get rich and happy. Well, I'd take fucking happy, I think. No, actually, I would not still take rich. <laughs> Only because, dude, I won't be that unhappy. And, and you know, I'm just going to join the millions of people that are unhappy anyway. Like, I'm not going to, it's not going to be a bad thing. I'd rather be rich and slightly unhappy than fucking completely happy and broke as shit. Well, I don't know. Actually, I have to think about that before I actually answer. Because imagine being actually happy with nothing. Like, that would be kind of a cool feeling where, like, dude, it's cool. Hey, man. Just, hey, peace, brother. Love, man. This bond group's going to have to start taking for sure. Oh, but, dude, it would be great to... to but I can't do that, dude. Like, if, like if, I, if I couldn't get my kids or my family or, or people the things they need, like, if I couldn't feed my kids... Dude, that I'm not happy. But you determine that. That's the difference. I know, though. but I'm not happy. Yeah. Like they got clothes, they got their little designer shit. They're comfortable at school. Why designer shit, Brad? So they fit in better, so they're accepted more, so they have a better fucking life. Okay. You walk in with fucking a Rolex and you know, people realize, oh, he must have some money. He's got a Rolex. You walk in without a Rolex, people gotta wonder. It's like People judge people, dude. So hard. People judge people, dude. If I roll up in a Ferrari, the valet goes, oh, Mr. Lee. Ooh. I roll up in my Raptor, which is what I drive. They don't, they don't think I'm rich. They don't act like anything. So what's the difference? I'm the same dude pulling up in two different vehicles. Mm-hmm. One of them, you kiss my ass and act like I'm freaking a prince. And one of them, you're like, Meh, what's your last name? <laughs> Why? Why is that? It's man. It's it, it's so hard to pinpoint. I think a lot of it has to do with judgment. social media. Yeah, but it's social media and, and judging. It's just you know when people see somebody with a higher caliber car or watch or something like that, their perspective here we talked about offline. Their perspective is he must be somebody. Let me let me go ahead and impress him, right? Versus or something, or maybe they'll give me money. Or, or ex- and, and trying to get impressed. Yeah, I want to impress you, or I want to be why, accepted. Why does a girl? And again, girls can argue this all day long. Why does a girl, and, and they should, prefer someone with money? Yeah. Because now they have a more comfortable life. People were human beings. Our instincts tell us to produce, reproduce, and freaking like literally survive. Mm. So, so like girls pick alpha males. Why? Usually in a, in, a, in a community, the alpha male gets the girl because instinctually, Back in the olden days, the, if you were worth, if you were with a weak man, your family would get killed and raped and plundered and 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 into slavery and all this other crazy crap. Mm-hmm. So, like you know, the stronger the man, the more likely your survival. So, guess what they did? They would take the 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 biggest, strongest man. And same thing. I mean, there's just all these like animalistic instincts. People yeah. don't even freaking count into it, and it's mm-hmm. like you have to count that shit in, yeah. folks. That's part of the fucking equation. What are we really trying to do? We're trying to survive. Well, my question is, is if I'm, if, I'm, if I'm surviving where every night we're having barbecues and parties and Ferraris and my friends are flying private with me and the whole thing looks like a party, and then your other friend, he ain't doing nothing. He's just sitting around reading a book all day. And he will be for the next 20 years. Who you want to hang with? Me or your fucking bookworm, dipshit, fucking self-development freak? 
<laughs> who, who you want to hang with? We'll go have some some parties in your backyard, man. Well, depend. Well, actually, the answer is depends on depends on the day, right? Sometimes you might want to go hang out with your fucking bookworm buddy. Yeah. Some days you might you want to go have fun, and that's where it comes down to one's own individual choice. Mm-hmm. So I can tell you what I think's fucking successful, and then it may not be what you agree with, but it is what I think successful, and that's the beautiful thing I think about about all this you get to decide and if and if a billion dollars in lamborghinis and fucking huge houses is really what you want don't apologize for it use that as that emotion dig down like fucking john was just telling you to do and find at the bottom you know that emotion because once you attach emotion emotion to anything it could be a good thing but it also could be a bad thing Mm -hmm. like when it comes to business decisions dude take out emotion don't don't introduce emotion to business decisions and you'll you'll make the best decision possible when there's no emotion attached the best business decision in other words you might ruin a life that you didn't have to ruin like for example some people come to me and they're like well why wouldn't you just fire the person well there's things you had to consider well why business decision you wouldn't have considered any of those right and as far as a business decision it would have been better to go bam you're done see ya i don't care that your freaking kids are going to go hungry for the next three months and then you're going to end up committing suicide i'm removing that emotion yeah i bid you adieu my friend it's business you're making a decision off the values though yeah, but when you when you bring emotion into it, it's like, oh, this is a good dude, man. I don't know. This guy's been a little unstable. I don't know if this will crack him. Hey, let's 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 wait till after Christmas so we just at least get through that. You know, oh, that's a nice guy to me. Like, oh, okay, that guy's doing business with emotion. Yeah, clearly, because the right decision would have been to fire the dude from a business, but not from a human being, not from a humanity standpoint. Humanity would have been prick. You're making enough fucking money. Let the dude coast through fucking Christmas so you don't add Christmas on top of it all. Because, dude, not being able to afford Christmas presents, how do you think that feels? I'd rather get beat up by five dudes. What, is that what happened to you? Four. I didn't get beat up, by the way. I'd get, well, <laughs> well, well you went to jail because you got in a fight with four yeah. dudes. I'd rather get in a fight with four dudes than fucking let my little princess girls fucking go through a Christmas. Every day not of the week. having a present. Every day of the week. So, in, in the end, most people, and most people would say that. You know what, though? Would they? Because I know people that would say, oh, I'll take an ass beaten to get my kids presents. And then I know people that wouldn't take an ass beaten. Mm-hmm. And you know what? I can't blame either person. You know why? Dude, I don't want my ass beat either. But at the end of the day, what do you want more? Mm. What do you want more? You want to fucking wake up black and blue, sore, but your kids are happy and they got to experience Christmas like you did. I'll take an ass beaten for that. Sure, I will. People don't know what they want, though. That's the issue. And you That's can, the issue. People walk around with this fog of not understanding what clarity is. Look, if you don't know what you want, you're not going to take the right action steps to get there. So you're, you're going to continue this you're groundhog shooting, You're shooting in the dark is all. Yeah. You might end up there. You could. You could, but that doesn't. then you can't celebrate it, though. You can't celebrate like you need to because you're like, maybe man, I've been working maybe so hard. Maybe that's why I'm not celebrating it, it, what I've achieved. Because when people come in, they're like, oh, this is great, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, dude, I feel like I'm way behind. I'm not as big as everybody thinks I am. Like, what do you guys think? Like, I'm a billionaire? I ain't a billionaire. Um, well, you got money. So, like, I, I'm not anywhere near where I want to be. And by the way, thought I should have been. Okay? So, I'm disappointing myself, if you ask me. But I'm also a realist, and I also realize, shit, if this is all it ever gets, this is fucking cool. Like, I'm, I'm cool right now. But, dude, it's all perspective. If everyone would just get that in their head, you get to choose your perspective. Mm-hmm. And, and the perspective is usually what, in, what, what dictates the outcome. Why? Well, you wake up positive, and you go through life positive, and you look at shit positive. You die, you're going to, man, I had a pretty good fucking life. Why? Because you were positive the whole time, man. You lived the same life or even better. Negative, you're born rich, you fucking did this, you did that, you got this, you got that, and, and you die and you're like, fucking nobody liked me. I fucking, you know, everybody fucking was out to get me. And man, I fucking regret life. Well, who, who, who lived a better life? Oh, yeah. The broke fuck? Yes or no? Yeah, it's the perspective, man. It's all it's perspective. It, yeah. Why and that, is, that's your superpower. People... Like you said, they need to take consideration. I think it's one of the number one misused tools that we have as humans is that in a moment, I can change my perspective of you. 
in a way that can empower me and benefit me to be better or to go ahead and just be happier. In every situation, it's all about perspective. And, and my perspective used to be the woe is me, the victim. You know, this is happening. Why is this happening to me? Why is this happening to me? And perspective comes lots of times, we said it before, by the questions that you're asking yourself, right? Like you have to change that perspective as fast as you can. And if it's, if you're looking at somebody, you know, it doesn't serve you. It doesn't value, like add value to you. And it's, and it's, it's actually bringing you down. You need to change perspective immediately. If you're in traffic right now, listening to this and you're like, man, it's damn traffic. I can't believe I'm sitting here in traffic. Like you, that emotion, that negativity, that's a choice. That thought process, that's a choice. Sure is. Cause there's someone sitting next to you that also is sitting in the same exact traffic. And he's sitting there and he's happy as big and shit because he's got a car and he just got this brand new car. And even though it's a 1998, he's happy because he's never had a car before. But guess what? He's happier than you and you're driving a Lexus and he's sitting there driving a 1998 Oldsmobile, but he's happier because he changed his perspective. So once again, who's happier? The person with the right perspective, not the more money. You know that's right, folks. <laughs> I get, I get so, heated. So folks, real John Marone, pretty much everywhere. Go look him up. Uh, what's your website? JohnMarone.com. JohnMarone.com. You also got a podcast, don't you? Yes, what's Power it? of Progression. So you guys want to hear more shit like this? Boom. He drops them all the time. Has great guests come on. Go subscribe to his podcast. If you want him to coach you, he's got several. Uh, I, I say they're too cheap, but he's got several programs, man, to help anybody and everybody. So if you like what he had to say, reach out to his ass. And I do thank you for coming in. And by the way, he brought me some sweet ass freaking gold record dropping bombs. You know, I don't even know what you call it. Souvenir, uh, fucking trophy. It's a, it's like bad. plaque something. Uh, uh, what, uh, what is it called? I'm thinking of. <coughs> what happens when like you get a keepsake? A keepsake. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> got me a cool keepsake. You got a gold a gold record. <laughs> now, I don't think this will drop in time for the event but you got an event coming up in scottsdale when february 20th yeah february 20th um we'll be speaking out there you're speaking at the event as well hey don't tell nobody dude. Uh, uh, i like when no one shows oh up. you know what i mean just let them know i'll be there and, and they'll but show i like up no one you. shows up dude i hate when i speak and there's actually people in the audience <laughs> what? yeah that's... i like i like to speak and have nobody hear me so then it doesn't matter if i did good or bad and then just get off and go and what's funny done. is when i do speak i act as if it doesn't matter. <laughs> That's why I never know if I did good or I did bad. Cause like sometimes I'll walk out and my, I'll literally have a whole thing I want to talk about. And by the time the minutes are over, it's like, shit, I didn't bring any of that up. And that was the good, that was going to be the, the bomb. And I talked for 30 minutes and I think, did I, drop any bombs did i fucking give any value but you're in flow state that's that's like people don't don't recognize that being in flow state is one of the most powerful states you could be in where you're sitting there and, and like like i was in a band for a little bit and you know we weren't the best but some of our best music came when we were just jamming right and if you if you never hit record you're never gonna be able to capture what you did right so i, I like to have people just understand when they're speaking or maybe they're in sales don't necessarily remember the script but embody the message and find a way into flow state. Dude, you didn't you didn't uh, get all butt hurt and pissed after you tried to be in all the boy bands and never made it. You know, uh, no. Uh, you, they, you mad at Nick Carter, bro? Nick Carter, no, I'm not mad at Nick you Carter. You mad at Justin Timberlake? You know, actually, if, if Justin's my dude, man. I like dude, Justin listen, Timberlake. Dude, listen, listen. Uh, what's his name? Marky Mark. Yeah. Justin Timberlake. Mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't even say Nick Carter, but they'll throw him in there. Yeah. Who else? Boy band, um, that, that uh, like made it. I mean, and, but and Nick Lachey, get, 98 degrees. And no, I mean, no, 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 they, <laughs> no, 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 no. But when I say make it, I mean like super, like Justin Timberlake. Oh, yeah, is JT. bigger than fucking all of them. Yeah, no, Justin Timberlake, but, by but far. boy band made it as a boy band. And but the individuals when it broke apart, like Timberlake, dude, what, what was he in? Back, uh, in, in sync, in sync, yeah. So again, who else was in in sync? Now, there's in sync bands be like, you know, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> but, but dude. It's Justin Timberlake. Yeah. That's who made it out of that band. Absolutely. Uh, uh, Backstreet Boys. Who made it out of that band? Like Nick Carter for a minute. That's it. Justin Timberlake. Okay. <laughs> Still. So NSYNC's winning so far. Yeah. Now, what other boy bands were there? Said, Menudo? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Remember Menudo? Yeah. I do. You, you, you might know. You're old I, enough. I, I know you're, Menudo. You're, you're only 33, dude. Remember, yeah. I'm thinking back. Like, who are the fuck well, boy I know bands Menudo. when they first came out? Like, yeah. Menudo. Ricky Martin came out of Menudo, mm -hmm. I think. But well, anyway, there's always one that came out of the boy bands, yeah. but where's the boy bands now? 
Yeah. They don't have any. The the boy bands of today are still the fucking boy bands of yesterday. NSYNC still plays. Or not NSYNC. Backstreet uh, Boys. Backstreet Boys. Yeah. But that's uh, Mark Wahlberg's brother, Donnie. Right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. so Marky Mark, too. Mm-hmm. Would you rather be a movie star or a fucking rock star? Jeez. Be both. That's what I mean. But I, I, it, it all depends, man. It depends on what you want, right? Like, because well, to answer, me, the, the right answer is both. Yeah, that's what I mean. Because there, there are two different lifestyles, right? And, and what so, do you think gets more chicks? Oh, I, I mean, I would definitely say a boy band, rock star, rock star for sure, dude. Yeah, hundred percent, sure. like a hundred percent, dude. That's funny. You look like you fucking were one of them East Coast dudes that jumped in a boy band to try and make I, it. Uh, we weren't in a boy band. Like it was, it was like a uh, like an emo screamo type of band. Uh, so it wasn't a, a boy band. It wasn't. We, no, we didn't do like That's choreographic. Why you didn't fucking win, bro. We didn't do choreographic dances hey, or see, anything. I like should have. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Y'all go get your gym tan laundry going. Look, man. Hey, weren't you from Jersey? Jersey Shore. Yeah. I just ran into on the way home from where was I? Just recently, Miami, and I'm sitting there, looking front. Oh, it's that motherfucker from Real World, uh, or Jersey Shore, whatever it's called. Uh, Which one? Ronnie. Yeah. Yeah, Ronnie's sitting there. I'm like, is that fucking Ronnie? I'm looking at him like, dude, his hair is darker. Is that Ronnie? Fuck, it sure it was. Yeah. I sure lived three was. blocks from them. Yeah, sure was Ronnie. Dude, like that <laughs> You're guy. listening, Ronnie. Yeah, like why didn't know Brad Ronnie? Saw you. Yeah, tag, everybody tag Ronnie. <laughs> He'll be listening like, where the fuck are they talking about me? Right at the end, Ronnie. <laughs> Ronnie, I was right behind you in the fucking thing in Miami. And then all of a sudden he went up and I, I, w- I was in this line. They let us through. And I was thinking, okay, he's going to come through, you know, where the radars and shit are. And that's where I'll know for sure. I looked up afterwards and it was him, but I go in and all of a sudden, boom, he's gone, gone. I still don't know what happened to fucking Ronnie. He probably got arrested along the way. <laughs> but I'm, but, but the reason I brought him up is because, like, to me, that's East Coast, yeah. Jersey style. And, and they're not even, they're not even from Jersey. So they're they're not, the only one from Jersey was Mike, um, and then Sammy. Because like I said, I lived three blocks from there for two plus years. You know them? Uh, we ran in the same clubs. Did laundry at the same, same place. Same ages. Same, we actually had the same place when we got a haircut. Yeah. Like Dude, so, so Jim Tan Laundry, was that a real thing? No, that was their thing. You know, a lot of people in, in Jersey, Jersey Shore, uh, you know, they surf, they skate, um, they play in bands. It, it's not what this show portrayed whatsoever. So that show was just the, what do they call them, guidos? Yeah. So and what guidos are, we call them bennies, uh, where they come over in the, in the you know, summertime and they just like take over our entire Why beach. do you call them bennies? Uh, so it's like Brooklyn, Edison, New York. Um, I forget the other one. So it's like an acronym. Yonkers. Yonkers could be Yonkers, but it's anybody that does not have a New Jersey plate. Honestly, it's usually even people that aren't even in New Jersey Shore, even North Jersey. So we got a battle between like North Jersey and where we're from. Now, where do you live? Uh, Destin, Florida. So I lived in, in uh, oh, by the way, dude, Dallas. If you guys want to go to a retreat, oh, yeah. this mofo puts on good ones in old Destin. Yeah, beautiful Destin. And, that, and your next one's May 2nd? May 2nd. Is it sold out? Uh, not yet. We have about seven tickets left. Folks, you, they, and they might be sold out by the time this drops. I'll try to drop it quick. But uh, if you guys are interested in going to hang out with old John Maroney, his name's Marone, <laughs> go to johnmarone.com and book your shit to that retreat. Yeah. Tell me about it real quick. So we get uh, 40 individuals. It's in a, it's in a house overlooking the Gulf. Um, and we get 40 individuals in that room who are ready to tap into their own bullshit, right? Tap into things that are holding them back and start rewiring their mindset. Also start giving them tools to truly be productive and to what they want, right? So every person has their own goals. So we get them clear on A, what's holding me back, get them clear about okay, what do I need to do to get to where I want to go and give them actionable tools. So it's a super vulnerable, uh, intimate setting. It's seven hours of just immersing yourself um, in the things that have just really uh, not benefited you and how to tap into that greatness and truly find it. Um, so if you go to johnmarone.com forward slash retreat, um, it, it's something that I didn't know if I was going to do again this year. And the reason being is because it takes a lot, right? To, to run a retreat and to be up there for eight hours. And then I just was sitting there on the beach thinking about it. And I thought about all of the things that happened afterwards. Messages of people making more money. Messages of people finally reconnecting with their husband and igniting that flame again. People being way more productive and not being a slave to their phone anymore. And just knowing those things, like it wasn't the three lives or four or 20 or 30 I changed. It's that when I changed one of their lives, the ripple effect of who else like gets affected. Mm. Right. I always talk about like, it's way bigger than me. And if I can change your life, Brad, I know you have kids. 
I don't just change your life. I change your kid's life. I change your wife's life, right? And I, and I change your employees' lives because you're becoming a better person, a better leader. Um, so whenever people are like, oh, I want to change 10 million lives, that's you, it's so hard to truly put uh, an understanding of how many lives you could change. Uh, but it's just, there's a ripple effect. And when you understand that, the, the time put into making a retreat, I mean, it's a no-brainer. Um, so once again, we have seven tickets left, and it, it will sell out. It's in Destin, Florida. And if you've never been to Destin, Florida, it's the whitest beaches in the country. It's the most beautiful water. But that one-day retreat will get you from where you're at and who you are to where you want to go and who you need to become to get there. Yep. Well, you might be destined to go. Oh, it's so good. Until <laughs> next time, kids, as always, keep it real. Go share this out, by the way. Rate, review, share it out, and freaking hit subscribe. Go follow me on social media, Instagram. Go follow John on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, Body Rock, doing the do. But most of all, share and subscribe this to this biscuit so it raises up the ranks, kids. Till next time. Mm-hmm.